It's a new year and that means new smartphones. Guys, it's so exciting to be looking forward to all of these new phones and there's just too many to keep track of. Every manufacturer wants to release their own version, uh, their own design, and in this video I wanted to bring that all together and show you the best of 2017, what we have to look forward to. The Samsung Galaxy S8 and Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Now these are the two phones I am most excited about going into 2017. Samsung is always on top of their game, introducing new technologies, especially when Apple doesn't choose to release them. Apple holds on to them for years and years and years, but Samsung is like, here, take it all, take it all now, we're gonna give you all of it. So for this year, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is going to be getting even bigger. The display is increasing in size, but bezels are shrinking. The war on bezels is going strong, and Samsung is winning that one, and I'm so happy for it. And although we won't be receiving 4K resolution on this phone, there will be other improvements, such as the P3 color gamut on the display, also a new RGB pixel structure, which means you'll get more vivid and brighter colors on that display. I just cannot wait for it. I'm an Apple guy, but Samsung always manages to get me excited. Now, a new leak actually shows that the display will be curved on the edges, just like the Mi Mix. So that's a very exciting change. It will be one of the sexiest phones in 2017. I'm almost sure of it. And sure, on paper, the Samsung Galaxy S8 will be amazing. It'll have so much improved technology, but the real showstopper is going to be the iPhone 8. A lot of people are going to pay attention to this one just because it will be such a radical change in design from what we're used to. We've had three years of the same looking basic design. The iPhone 8 is going to improve upon that with a new change to the design. So glass front and back, inspired by the iPhone 4 and 4S with major improvements to the display. The flagship iPhone 8 model was said to receive an organic LED display. That means a lot brighter, more vivid colors. Not only that, it allows for a more efficient phone and it can allow for a thinner design as well. Not that Apple needs to go thinner, they just could if they would want to. Also, a wraparound curved display. Where have we seen this before? I wonder. But nonetheless, I do embrace this change. It's about time iPhone had a major redesign. We've been looking at the same basic design for three years. So, no home button, an improved display, all glass design, but one of the most monumental changes will come with wireless charging. Not your regular typical wireless charging, but walk into a room and your phone starts charging almost immediately. How crazy would that be? Also rumored is an IP68 water resistance rating, so it'll match the Galaxy S7 now at 5 feet for 30 minutes. I cannot wait for this one. Apple could even advertise it as a swim-proof device like the Apple Watch 2. But that's not the only Apple product that's going to be released later this year. Also, the iPhone 7S. So although the iPhone 8 will be the larger flagship model, Apple will want to introduce two cheaper models as well for everyone that doesn't want to go all out. Now these will be an LCD equipped iPhone 7 upgrade, basically the S means speed. So it'll be a much faster version of the iPhone 7, but mostly internal changes. Although it is said to receive a stainless steel chassis, it'll be the same overall design. It's unlikely that this model will have wireless charging, but it'll basically be a simple upgrade upgrade for people that don't want an organic LED curved edge iPhone. It'll be a more sensible phone for daily users. And know for the optimists out there, this one will not have a headphone jack. Once Apple's made a decision like that, they're not going back. It'll keep the home button just like the iPhone 7. Most of the changes again will be in the speed department. So expect some major improvements there, possibly the A10X chip from the iPads, although it's likely it could share the same chip with the iPhone 8, just keep most of the same design. And believe it or not, the Samsung Galaxy Note name will live on. So Samsung is not giving up on that brand just yet. Rising from the ashes of the Galaxy Note 7, like a phoenix, the Galaxy Note 8 will do much better and improve upon where the Note 7 failed. So the very first thing, obviously, is the battery issue. This time around, Samsung is going to be using LG's batteries, as they haven't had any issues with those, and this could actually be Samsung's first smartphone with a 4K display. Samsung usually likes to introduce the more complicated, advanced tech with the Note series, and this year we could be seeing the very same thing. Also, the new S Pen 2 with a built-in speaker, possibly to produce uh, some kind of noise, or like mimicking an actual pen, possibly. And as always, this is Samsung's powerhouse, so they want to make sure it is powered properly. This time, they will be using the Snapdragon 835 processor, Exynos in certain markets, of course, and 6 to 8 gigabytes of RAM. No businessman has time for lag. And man, LG does not like to give up. So the G5, this was a smartphone that didn't do particularly too well. It was that modular 
your phone that you can actually swap out the bottom for and introduce new features. Now, it was a great concept. Why would this phone fail and not sell very well? Well, the only problem was with a phone like this, where the whole marketing scheme is that you can add modules to the phone. If you don't introduce new modules and only keep two, I think there was like a speaker one and a camera one, nobody will buy this phone based on that gimmick. Otherwise, it was a pretty mediocre Android phone. I didn't even open mine until just now. That's like half a year because I just wasn't excited for it. With the G6, LG is looking to fix that and stop thinking outside the box. Basically, think like every other smartphone manufacturer. We're going to be seeing a huge trend in front and back made of glass, and that's exactly what the LG is going to do. This leaked concept is what it's going to look like, very similar to the G5, just with a more glass design. Wireless charging, Snapdragon 835 is included. And that brings me to the Google Pixel 2. So the Google Pixel 1 was a fantastic phone. At its core, it was one of the best Android phones ever. It was just lacking some hardware features that even the iPhone has, such as IP67 water resistance at the minimum. The camera was fantastic. That was a big plus to Google. But later this year, the Google Pixel 2 is said to be shipping with a dual camera sensor, as that is superior. It's going to have IP68 water resistance as well as the first one didn't and an all glass design to allow for wireless charging and very possible a QHD display. So although the Google Pixel 1 was great, these areas the Google Pixel is going to improve on and make for a much better stock Android phone. The Snapdragon 835 and 6 gigabytes of RAM is rumored. So concepts that have leaked or renders have shown a glass back design that would allow for wireless charging and a more tougher look for the borders. I actually do kind of like it. So that's the Google Pixel 2. And that brings me to the next OnePlus phone. I mean, it should be called the OnePlus 4, right? The old one was OnePlus 3 and 3T. But no, it actually might be called the OnePlus 5, as in Chinese culture, number 4 is considered unlucky, and this is a phone with its main audience being China. But I gotta say, OnePlus as a company is fantastic. They make sure you can get the best possible experience, they have really fast software updates, and the hardware is always top-notch for a very reasonable price. And which other smartphone manufacturer do you know of that releases an update halfway through its cycle just to make the CPU faster, as they did with the 3T? This one is rumored to have the Snapdragon 835 and a massive 3500 milliamp battery, and of course the next generation dash charge that'll allow you to get so much charge just within 15 minutes, over 50%. This is a phone that competes in the mid-tier price range, but it's a bargain. These phones can usually put high-end models to shame. And this could finally be the year the future arrives with foldable smartphones. Late this year, Samsung is said to release its smartphone that can fold in half to serve a dual purpose, both a tablet and a smartphone. They've been developing this for four years, and this could finally be the year we could see it in our hands. Now, the run will be limited to 100,000 units as it's more of a concept, testing the waters, seeing how people react to a phone like this. Of course, the tech is only possible with an organic LED panel, and I'm so excited to see this because this could start a revolution in smartphones. And the HTC 11. Who here even remembers what this company is? They used to make good phones back in the day, but now, eh, not so much. Their sales aren't doing very well, but they're hoping to turn that around this year with the HTC 11. They're returning to their roots with a dual lens camera setup, just like on the iPhone 7 Plus, but they had this even earlier on their HTC 8. So they're hoping to improve the camera. The design itself could have a wireless charging compatible back with a glass design. And in general, they will be evolving the design that they had before. This is a leaked concept of the HTC 11. Nokia. Look who's back. They finally decided to pull their head out of Microsoft's ass and release a real Android phone. It's no wonder this thing sold out within a minute when it went on sale in Chinese markets. Now this is a budget phone. It's about $250. But for the price, it's quite amazing what they managed to stuff inside of it. A Snapdragon 830 chip, that's octa-core, and it's even better than the Snapdragon 821. It also does have an Adreno 505 GPU, so it's pretty well specced. Also, durability is still on the table, like the older 3310. It has a Gorilla Glass 2.5D screen, which is very durable, but at the same time very aesthetically pleasing. It's already out in China, but it will hit the US market within a few weeks. So that's the Nokia 6. Actually pretty excited for this one. And the very last one is the Xiaomi Mi series. So whether it's the Mix 2 or the Xiaomi Mi 6, this brand is actually ahead of its time. Known once for copying Apple, they're outdoing them now. They're using ceramics in materials, 
bone conducting earpieces for recalls and even laser technology in the cameras. It's amazing how far ahead of the game they are. It's just not implemented totally well with the software. I wish they would introduce a better skin or just a stock Android ROM with it. Otherwise, I'm very excited for what this phone company has to bring. I mean, look at this thing. It's a slice of the future. The borders, no bezels, it's, it's just stunning. I cannot wait to see what they bring out next. And that's just a quick preview of the smartphones we have to look forward to. I'm really liking the trends I'm seeing. Water resistance, wireless charging, larger displays, less bezels, and a huge increase in speed. So I cannot wait to share all of these with you on my channel. Stay tuned for all of that, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.